Our old dear friend Ryan. Hi, another year. <laughs> uh, another year. We look beautiful. Yes. We look fabulous. All right, Ryan, I want to ask you what have you been up to? We talked last year at Sid. I know you were writing a book. I want you to talk about that, but give us a bit of the lay of the land for all things in the world of Ryan. Well, thank you so much uh, for being the most amazing person that you are. Um, yes, I finished uh, and wrapped up a book. It's called Finding My Humanity. Uh, it's great. I got an advanced copy, signed copy, I think. Really, really nice. Thank you. Well, and th this story is really about my journey into development and how I started off as a sullen youth in middle America, not unsure of where, uh, what a future looked like for someone like me, a young gay kid in the middle America. Um, to leading global movements on LGBT human rights around the world and now finding myself in a company that goes all around the world doing all sorts of stuff to help people who are marginalized or underrepresented in their local communities to have voice and agency in ways that they wouldn't otherwise have. And so, yeah, my book is doing well. Um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu's granddaughter helped write an uh, introduction what? to the book. So um, I'm really proud of it and I think those who have read it so far Love it. Um, and um, yeah, that's where I'm at with the book. <laughs> Amazing, Ryan. Well, I hope folks do get a chance to read it and check it out. Um, you do a lot of work on gender-based violence, on thinking about gender and the intersection of technology, harm, um, and, and, and global development. What are some of the trends you're seeing? What are some of the things that, you know, world in crisis-wise are keeping you up at night? Tell us kind of... Well, um, as you may know, I am currently the Global Manager of Diversity, Equity, Engagement, and Inclusion at DAI, a large implementing partner of USAID. I also serve as the Inclusive Development Working Group Chair here at SID. I'm rolling off this year. Um, but and, and just yesterday, I was on a panel at Amazon headquarters. Where wow. We were really, really talking about this very topic and how we look to the future of AI, new technologies, and its impact upon social impact programs. And particularly the disproportional impact it may have on marginalized or historically underrepresented groups. Um, and so, you know, as we're focusing in on this topic, we think it may be going away. Diversity is the big scary word now, when in reality, it is a pathway to help all advance all of our work. Because if we think, what else is uh, diversity? It's complexity. How do we, as development practitioners, think out of binary co uh, constructs that limit to things to this or that when we live in a pluralistic world? How do we examine uh, the paradigms with which we understand solutioning to solve some of the world's most pro uh, pressing problems without conceptualizing the impacts and experiences of a multitude of peoples who live in multitudes of ways? And so. The future uh, that we're seeing, both in inclusive development and at my company, DAI, through a diversity and inclusion lens, is just that. Examining complexity, understanding the human-centered components of what that looks like, and then how that shapes the ways in which we tackle the world's most pressing problems. So that's where I'm at right now. A beautiful and eloquent uh, rendition of, of the work you do. Really, really inspiring stuff. So, I mean, there must be many places where you feel hope and, and positivity. What Are there a couple in this role specifically, but even with the world in crisis, like what, where are you finding energy, finding meaning, finding hope? Um, well, I think uh, just like you uh, and many people in this room, we work in a mission-driven uh, industry, and so a lot of people really do care. They, they want to know how to do diversity better, how to be more inclusive. I think uh, we haven't done a good enough job of giving them pathways on how to do so. They get the big picture, but they don't get how it translates to their day-to-day -day roles, let alone how it then translates to the actual project impact. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I'm inspired by that hopefulness, and most importantly, I'm inspired by a lot of the young people who are getting more and more agency, who live and work in uh, con country contexts uh, in which uh, innovation is, ne ne is necessary, right? And how they are, through their own resilience, are creating innovations that will drive the way the whole world, world works one day. And my only hope is that those young people who may live in a village or uh, be of a lower caste in a society um, are given that fair and equitable opportunities uh, to take their creations that they built and they shared uh, and be given power and given agency and ownership 
not just at the local level, but all the way up at uh, decision-making bodies like the UN or in organizations like DAI. We're tr doing our best to really expand the ways in which we do important work. So, right. Every time I talk to you, I get fired up. I mean, you're just doing amazing work. You're such a force for positivity and inspiration in this field. So. I am Team Ryan, all the way to the top. Uh, whatever you're running for, I'm voting for it. Well, thank you, thank you. And I just want to say my middle name is Ubuntu, meaning I am because you are, our interconnectedness. We are doing great work. My company is doing great work. Lots of amazing people are doing great work. And I'm so honored. Just You're doing a great work behind the camera, right? We're all doing great work, and I'm so grateful to be a part of it. So thank you. Ryan, Ubuntu, Olson, everybody. We thank you, Ryan, for stopping by today. All right.